Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today I have a question from functions. We need to find the range for the following function. fx is equal to square root of 3 minus x plus square root of 2 plus x. The range of this function is. Uh, these are the options. Closed interval 2 root 2 to root 11. Is it uh, open interval uh, root 5 to root 13? Is it root 2 to root 7 closed intervals? Is it root 5 to root 10? Well, in order to find out range, they have not provided us any domain. Now, what is range? Range is basically all the values that get generated out of this function. That is, it's the set of all fx's that can be generated where x is in your domain. x is the input that you can take. So for our purpose, we will first of all have to think what would be the domain for this function. It is not asked in the question, but we should know because accordingly we will figure out what kind of fx's can be generated. Okay. So for domain, what do I require? The restrictions would be I have square roots here. So whatever is inside the square root has to be positive. And both for both the square roots, the condition should be simultaneously getting satisfied. I can only take those x's which satisfy the both the conditions. What conditions? So 3 minus x should be greater than or equal to 0. And at the same time, 2 plus x should be greater than or equal to 0. This would mean that x could be less than or equal to 3. And this would mean that x should be greater than or equal to minus 2. Now, if you see on the number line, if you try to understand what values can x take, this is minus 2, this is 3. More than minus 2 and less than 3. So that means we're talking about the x's that I can use, minus 2, 2, 3. Closed interval because 0 as an output could be, is a, as an input is, uh, is fine. So this is my domain. Now, why do I need the domain? Domain, once I know the domain, it's very easy for me to find the range because these are the values that x can take. I need to know what fx will be getting generated. One of the very good way of figuring out or thinking about ranges. It is that we are trying to tell the values of fx. Now, it's not that uh, we write down each and every value when we are giving the range. When you're giving the range, you're just telling what is the minimum value that f can take to the maximum value that f can take? What is the minimum value that f can take? to the maximum value that it can take. So in another sense, a very important way in which with which you can actually easily find out range is to find the minimum and maximum values. Let's find minimum, maximum. Why it becomes very, uh, uh, you know, ma makes this question easy for us if we find out min max, because we know that we can find out min max here. Why do we know that? And how do we know that? We just figured out domain. Domain is your closed interval minus 2 to 3. This is closed and bounded. That is, it's a, your domain is a compact set. And the function, if you look at the function, the function is a continuous function. You will, you know, whatever value of x you will put, something will come out. It will never break, right? The function will never break. So it's a continuous function. It's a continuous function. So fx is a continuous function. On a compact domain. Compact means closed and bounded. Therefore, f will attain both max and min in the domain, okay? In the domain, f will definitely attain both max and min. It's a very logical thing. You have a function, it's continuous, whether it's differentiable or not. This one is differentiable. It's a continuous function, 
with no breaks then of course it will go you know attain some highest peak somewhere and some lowest uh, value somewhere where can max a max win could be attained points where f can attain maximum minima any function can attain maximum minima at uh, in case of closed domain end points and another uh, type of uh, you know point where you can attain max min is your critical point why do we call it critical because these are turning points so uh, the function is changing changing you know some change is happening there <clears throat> that change can give you maximum at that point. So end points or else in case of a differentiable function, we call our critical point stationary point. So stationary point. So yes, now you differentiate this, find your stationary point. End points we already have figured out. Let's find f dash x. So f dash x would be 1 upon you have uh, square root. So 1 upon 2 square root of 3 minus x minus 1 plus 1 upon 2 square root of 2 plus x. Okay. If I put this equals to 0, if I put this equals to 0 after, uh, you know, taking LCM or any manipulation that you plan to do, you can do that. 2 goes away. Root 2 plus x plus minus of root 2 plus x plus root 3 minus x will be equal to 0. And that would give us that root 2 plus x is equal to root 3 minus x without loss of generality. Let's just square on both the sides. Since this is equal, the squares will be equal. So 2 plus x is equal to 3 minus x and that implies 2x is equal to 1 and that implies x is equal to half. So her stationary point is half. Now all I have to do is find out the functional value at half, find out the functional value at uh, minus 3. No, sorry, 3, not minus 3. 3 and the other end point was minus 2. So let's find out the value of the function at these points. The value of the function at half is f of half is equal to square root of the function is 3 minus x 3 minus half plus 2 plus half, right? So that will give me, let's see what it gives me. 6 minus 1 gives me 5 by 2. And here 4 plus 1 gives me 5 by 2. How do I add this now? Well, this means I can take, it is just 2 times root 5 by root 2. I can separate root like that, right? So it's basically the same thing getting added. So it's twice of this same thing. Now this gives me root 2 and 2 cancels out and you get root 2 into root 5. Well, you can take the product right here. This product will be root 10. So root 10 is one of the values that we are getting at the stationary point, the value is root 10. I don't know whether this is min or max as of now, but I know that this is one of the values which can be min or max. Apart from that, I need f at 3. f at 3 will be uh, 3 minus 3 plus 2 plus 3. So it's going to be root 5. f at minus 2 is, so it will be... Uh, 3 minus minus 2 gives you plus 2 plus 2 minus 2. So that again gives you root 5. So clearly what are we getting? The 
smallest value, the smaller value is root 5. In fact, that would be the smallest value because max min comes out of, uh, you know, it, it can come only at these points, end points or the stationary point. So the minimum is this, and this is the maximum. So what is our range, guys? The range is root 5, root 10. What is it telling you? The what are the values that f can generate at the minimum it can generate root 5 at the maximum it can generate root 10 thank you very much i hope this helps in revising the concept of range pretty well